Scientists who study the neglected tropical disease schistosomiasis are relying on the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, or NIAID, for an unusual research resource, snails. By providing this resource to scientists free of charge for use in their experiments, NIAID is helping scientists save money and combat a disease that is ravaging the developing world. This is a, a disease that uh, does not gra grab the headlines very much. Uh, it's a, a neglected a disease. Uh, uh, it infects the poorest of the poor. And we just think it's a worthwhile thing to look at. Uh, it causes so many problems. Uh, and it predisposes people, people in the poorest countries to other infections as well. According to the World Health Organization, at least 200 million people worldwide have schistosomiasis, and more than 700 million people live in endemic areas. The cause? Parasitic worms, which contaminate fresh water across the globe, primarily in Africa, but also South America, the Caribbean, parts of Asia, and the Middle East. When people come into contact with contaminated water, the worms burrow into people's skin and make their way to blood vessels in the liver, intestines, or bladder. There, the worms can live for years, producing thousands of eggs that build up in the body and cause serious pain and internal scarring. Currently, no vaccines exist to prevent schistosomiasis. There are drugs available, but they can't prevent reinfection. For scientists to tackle schistosomiasis, then, they must learn more about the parasites that cause the disease and their complex life cycles. What they know already might surprise you. Before the worms ever make it inside humans to lay eggs, they must first spend time maturing in an intermediate host. In this case, specific species of snails. Studying the parasites in snails could yield possible interventions to stop the disease. If we can look at the molecular interaction of this parasite in the snail, we might actually be able to translate that to how we relate to the parasite ourselves. But maintaining colonies of snails for use in experiments is no easy task. That's where NIAID's Schistosomiasis Resource Center comes in. The problem is if uh, investigators want to actually look at different stages of the disease or the parasite, they would have to maintain the entire operation in their own lab which is not only expensive to maintain, but you also need a certain amount of technical expertise that not every lab has. And so back in the 60s, the NIH had the foresight to fund uh, a contract so that these life cycle stages could be maintained, so that researchers can actually tap into that without maintaining these life cycle stages in their own labs. So by doing that, they're able to use those research dollars in other ways. The Schistosomiasis Resource Center supports 90 labs around the world by providing supplies and training, and researchers depend heavily on that support. Last year, the center sent out about 45,000 snails to researchers for use in experiments. And since its founding, the center has made possible thousands of publications on schistosomiasis research. Scientists use resources from the center for a variety of experiments. Some scientists are working to develop vaccines or better drugs to prevent or treat infections in people. Other scientists are focused on blocking transmission of the parasite in the snail so that it never reaches humans in the first place. Ultimately, a combination of approaches may be most effective in solving the problem. People, people are looking at various places around the cycle to break it. That's where why people are interested in uh, treating people. Uh, if all the people were treated, okay, no eggs would be uh, contaminating the environment. Okay, if all the snails were killed in an area, they could not, could not transmit it. So uh, it's research into all of these various phases that may be important, and it may be a combination of these that eventually, eventually uh, reduces it. But for some people, the most intriguing research questions about schistosomiasis are the most basic ones. Why are there parasites? What makes them parasites? What are their basic needs and why do they exist? To me, it's, you can't separate it from the entire, you know, the biological question here. It's precisely 
the big question and the most interesting question. And if we can understand that, can you imagine rid the world of these parasites for good? <laughs> In the meantime, the Schistosomiasis Resource Center continues to supply critical resources to the scientific community and help new researchers enter the field. Increasingly, researchers are recognizing that schistome infections share symptoms of many other diseases too, and that basic research discoveries about schistome infections may have important crossover applications for asthma, fibrosis, and other conditions as well. For more information about schistosomiasis research and other research resources at NIAID, visit www.niaid.nih.gov. For Ion NIH, this is Katie Rush.